Hello everyone. You may have heard this story or versions of it. Once upon a time, there was an old man who lived in a village and was well known for his wisdom. Every day many people went to the old man to ask for advice for solving their problems. It seemed that he could answer any question that was posed to him. One day a boy decided to test the old man's wisdom. He came up with the idea of capturing a butterfly and hiding it in his hands and asking the old man to guess whether the butterfly is alive or dead. With this plan he caught a butterfly held it in his hands and went to the old man and asked him what have i got in my hands the old man answered it is a butterfly is it alive or is it dead asked the boy after a short pause the old man replied the answer to that question lies in your hands if i say the butterfly is alive you could crush it in your hands so that you when you open your hands it would be dead if i say the butterfly is dead you can open your hands and let it fly free so no matter what i say you would prove i am wrong and a fool whether the butterfly is dead or alive it depends on you it is in your hands friends The same goes for our life, our present and our future. If we have any kind of problem or any lack of inner peace and happiness, we often tend to blame others or society for it. We do not realize that peace is in our own hands like the butterfly. It is up to us to desire for more peace and love and enjoy and protect the peace already within us. Friends, This is the fourth week we read and reflect upon the letter of James which was written to help all Christians to understand and attain spiritual maturity. It is important we all grow up spiritually and develop our character accordingly. The more we read the scriptures and know Christ, the more we must become like Christ. St Paul in his letter to the Ephesians says We are not meant to remain as children but to grow up in every way into Christ. Throughout the letter James encourages all believers to live as Christians should. Let me quickly summarize what we have heard or read so far. In the first week he exhorted us to gratefully recognize everything especially the word of truth which gives us life as a gift from above. to humbly receive it and faithfully apply it in everyday life so that we can save our souls he further called on us not to be merely hearers of the word and observers of religious traditions and ritual practices but also to pursue holiness and purity through charity and kind deeds to the poor and afflicted In the second week he admonished us not to show favoritism to anyone but to treat all people equally particularly he encouraged us to avoid favoritism at our worship places and in community gatherings instead he urged us to demonstrate our true faith through compassion and love for others last week he reminded us about the close link between faith and works and insisted that faith alone is not enough it should be manifested by actions otherwise our faith is dead or useless that is to say that both faith and works are essential for peace and salvation in today's text he reminds us of the connection between wisdom and conduct what is wisdom wisdom is not intelligence nor knowledge nor information Wisdom means the application of knowledge. Wisdom then is not what I know, wisdom is how I live. James sees wisdom as the ability to use our biblical knowledge to understand life and the world around us and therefore reshape our life, transform our attitudes and behavior into righteousness. 
and he believes that true wisdom is not something one attains but it that it comes only from God. And anyone who opens himself to God's wisdom changes his life forever. Because, he says, wisdom from above is pure, peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconstancy or insincerity. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. So, the man who seeks wisdom from above becomes peaceful, gentle, kind, merciful and are obedient to the teachings of God and considerate to the needs of others as well. Such a man desires peace, loves peace, lives a life of peace and righteousness and attempts to keep peace with others. In contrast, James points out, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that war within your members arise? Friends, James considers jealousy, selfishness, ambition, unbridled passions covetousness and envy as the characteristics of a man with earthly wisdom or wisdom from below. Such a person, he says, will bring only confusion, disorder, disharmony and a whole lot of evil into our society. In other words, the roots of all external evils in our world are found ultimately in the hearts of human beings. Finally, James shows how coveting corrupts our lives and robs us of happiness and peace. He states, You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. Friends, by this, James tells us that the root cause of, of bitter conflicts between individuals and wars between nations is covetousness or an unquenchable desire for what belongs to others and the desires of human beings are contrary to the will of God. Friends, this piece of instruction was written over 2000 years ago but it is also applicable to our life today. Are you at peace with yourself, others and God? If you are, thank God for it and protect it because it is so easy to lose it. If you are not, then what are the fundamental reasons? Are the division, disorder, disharmony in your home and among friends and communities? Instead of blaming our past, current circumstances or others for a lack of peace in our life, let us pursue wisdom from above, which is, as James says, pure, peaceable, gentle, full of mercy, good fruits, and is impartial and sincere. Let us seek wisdom from the scriptures which God has handed down to us throughout the ages and wisely live out what God dictates in our daily life. Let us be on our guard against selfish ambition, envy and covetousness or foolish and harmful desires which can plunge us into ruin and destruction and a lack of peace in our life. It is impossible to possess inner peace with these evil desires in our minds and hearts. Only when we have inner peace can we be at peace with those around us and with God. Therefore, if you have not yet obtained or do not possess it, ask God for help, but ask with a pure heart and for the right reasons. God will always bless us with abundant peace if we are obedient to Him. Amen. God bless you.